Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafaroff. This show is designed to highlight the work of leaders here in the United States and then beyond. Today with us, Ed Schloman. And Ed is the co-founder and CEO of Operation Warrior Shield. Ed, it is a great honor and pleasure to have you with us today. And Ed, I want to start first with what exactly is Operation Warrior Shield? Well, thank you, Jean. It's an honor to be on your great show. Operation Warrior Shield, I started this, uh, well, I worked started to work with David Lynch, the movie director, uh, on bringing transcendental meditation to veterans and first responders. So I started way back when in 2010 with that. And then in 2016, I wanted to stay focused with just taking care of veterans and first responders, those who wear the uniform and their families. And we provide comprehensive support programs, such as like yoga, uh, anything with mental health, transcendental meditation, and, and that, that kind of things that we do. And is that because when they come back from serving, many of the military men come back with a post-traumatic stress disorder? Yes, and you don't have to be in the military to suffer from post-traumatic stress. Uh, you know, we see now uh, so many of the first responders, the police department, the fire department, the, you know, their job, what they perform in a normal day the average person will not see in their lifetime. I mean, they see the worst of humanity and uh, that, that wears on them. And I'm proud to say that we're there for them 24 by seven. Now you started uh, the 501c3 or the charity in 2016. And so what have you done exactly since then to provide services? Well, working with the David Lynch Foundation, we've provided over hundreds of thousands of free scholarships to learn transcendental meditation, which is a non-religious modality that builds better minds and peace and stress. You know, I always use that transcendental meditation, uh, like saying what that is. And that is like if you're sitting on a rowboat in the middle of the ocean and all of a sudden waves build up and storms come through and you go up and down, up and down. Well, that's like a normal day living in New York City. But if you go down a couple hundred feet, what happens? Nothing. Tranquility. Well, that's the same thing about when people meditate. So that's, you know, one of the things we do. And lately, uh, we started a new program with Operation Warrior Shield called Operation Canine Companion. And so the Canine Companion uh, program is new, I understand. And I've recently heard that you have partnered with Southampton Animal Shelter to provide service dogs to uh, those that you are involved in serving. And... I think that's very new. I think it's a great thing. I myself, I'm involved with Southampton Animal Shelter. I serve on their honorary board and I've chaired the big gala many, many years. I've been honored by them. And what does this mean uh, to you and, and to those you serve, this partnership? Well, we all know how wonderful animals are. And uh, uh, I was just fortunate enough to meet Eugene and also Miss Pat, Patricia Deschamps, who have done amazing work. And in the last two months, we provided two companion dogs to a, uh, a Purple Heart recipient from Vietnam. And most recently, a uh, retired NYPD individual who uh, is going through uh, some emotional issues. And we provided these two dogs with a little bit of training. One is still in training. And it was like day and night to these two individuals. They just absolutely love them. Yes, and um, a number of other charities also are involved in connecting uh, former military people or uh, men of service 
who are having a little problem now with maybe um, emotional stability or 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 just not feeling well with um, a dog and it's been it's a very successful uh, partnership which i think is truly wonderful and i love that you're now involved with this with the southampton animal shelter you mentioned pat de jong she is the executive director of southampton animal shelter and uh, doing a very good job from what i can see and uh, a happy quote unquote marriage between uh, two charities um, or an animal shelter which is also a, a 501c3 and operation warrior shield to provide services uh, to uh, people who've uh, given their lives really to our country um, and, and now it's our turn to help them I think. Ed you have had a very extensive career in the military. I believe you were involved in the military for 28 years. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I served six years with the Marines um, after Vietnam. Uh, I came back to Brooklyn. My wife and I, uh, we were married at an early age and uh, she spent four years with me in the military. And uh, throughout the world, we traveled. And except for the time I was shipped to Vietnam, she came home. And uh, from there, I served another 22 years in uniform with the New York Air National Guard and retired in 1995 at the highest enlisted rank of Chief Master Sergeant. Well, congratulations on that. And that title is very well deserved. And I want to thank you again for your service to our country. And instead of just retiring, I see you're doing all you can through Operation Warrior Shield to help those in need. And Ed, tell us, you have an event coming up. I believe it's November 4th, and it's your major fundraiser. How many years have you been doing this fundraiser? And Tell our audience a little bit about how they might buy tickets or get involved. Well, we're pretty much sold out, thank God, for the sixth year. Uh, it's going to be at the Water Club on November 4th. And we are so honored to honor a few organizations. One is the Doris Day Animal Foundation. We're going to also honor uh, pa Patricia Deshawn. And of course, we're going to recognize the outstanding work you do, Gene, as a philanthropist too. So uh, we have those uh, three honorees coming up. And uh, uh, the, like I mentioned to you, we're going to have people from NYPD. Uh, we're honored to have the David Lynch Foundation involved with Bob Roth. And one of our special guests is Medal of Honor recipient, Paul Buka who was a Medal of Honor recipient from the Vietnam War, and many other social people will be at the event. Of course, you know, I'm very close with Eric Adams, believing that we are meditating New York City. Um, so I hope that he will show up and give us a proclamation. One of the things that we're working together with is to meditate New York City. And he uh, has given a proposal that every school in New York City, every teacher will have the opportunity to learn transcendental meditation and also bring it to the children, which will make an extremely wonderful difference to the, you know, children have stress too. I know what it was like when I went to school too, because I didn't want to study. And I was so, <laughs> come test day was the worst day to go to school. But anyway, we surpassed that. So it's going to be a great event. It's, it's, it's already sold out. But if people still would like to come, we could always find room for some people who may want to share in the great work that uh, we're now going to be doing with uh, the Southampton Animal Society. Uh, and so I look forward to seeing everybody there on November 4th. If they wish to uh, get involved, you know, my email is eshloman at AOL, and I'm always, I always answer the emails. And, and is there a website that one can go to to purchase tickets? 
Yes, it's OperationWarriorShield.com. And uh, there is a button there. You could uh, buy, buy the ticket, yes. Uh, I, we will have about 23 tables, 230 people. And I believe there's some individual uh, tickets available, but not many. It's nice to see that the event is selling out so early because many events have a tough time selling. And it's great to hear that uh, you're essentially sold out. For our audience, we are with Ed Schloman and Ed is the CEO and co-founder of Operation Warrior Shield. Now, Ed, I love the work that Operation Warrior Shield does. Are there volunteer opportunities for those who might want to help you out? Well, we always look for help. I look for board members that would love to play a role in growing more Operation Warrior Shield. You know, even though we've been around for six years, we're well thought of. I've received so many proclamations from two borough presidents. Uh, numerous senators have recognized our work. We have a city grant, uh, which I'm still working to uh, get, but we've received uh, you know, quite a bit of financial support. We would love to be involved with a major uh, foundation or I should say corporation. Um, you know, there's so many people in need of the wellness that we do. And uh, like I said, we would love to have more veterans and first responders come forward uh, to either reach in me, uh, E. Schloman at AOL, and let me know if, what we could do to help. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Gene, uh, these people who wear the uniform every day, uh, they have a high divorce rate. 74% of the cops, the police department are divorced. And that's some of the things that I work with them with the NYPD health and wellness section with a, uh, the commanding officer, Mark Wagner. Uh, we try to bring our wellness uh, to the families of the police officers. And unfortunately, uh, two days ago at seven o'clock at night, I'm talking to the commanding officer and uh, he had to abruptly hang up on me. Why? There was another uh, suicide by an NYPD uh, sergeant, which makes the fourth one this year. All very sad and very unfortunate. And I think it is our responsibility to try to help those that serve our country. And I love that Operation Warriors Shield is very involved. I also love that you have the support of Mayor Eric Adams, who is working so hard to strengthen the situation um, of crime and, and the other problems post COVID that New York City faces. Now, um, Ed, we mentioned um, the upcoming event, November 4th, and in a perfect world, how many um, dogs would you like to match with uh, those who've served our country in say in 2023? Well, what I'd like to do is build, and I'm trying to work with the VA hospital out there in Long Island, closer to the Hamptons, even though we are teaching transcendental meditation in all of the VA hospitals, they don't know about our recent Operation Canine Companion. First, we need to build a list of first responders and veterans who may want a dog, a recovery dog. Then we have to vent the individual to make sure that they will properly take care of the dog. So, you know, I have, uh, I, I, you're gonna hear this at November 4th, you know, people say, well, how loyal can these dogs be? And they're coming from recovery, you know, bad situations. And I said, well, let me give you an analogy. If you put your girlfriend or wife or partner in the trunk of a car with your German Shepherd, and in a half hour, open up the trunk of the car, who would be happy to see you? <laughs> oh, so my goodness. I think it'll be that dog. And uh, they give such unconditional love, as you know. And I want to mention one other thing, Gene. We may not stop with just dogs. Uh, I think there's, uh, there's a, the future for the cats out there in the Hamptons. 
that uh, you know, a lot of people would like to have a cat. And uh, I, I know that my grandmother, my great grandmother, she had six of them at one time. So uh, they never liked me for some reason. I don't know. Maybe they thought I was going to become a Marine someday and they didn't want to hang out with Marines. But um, there's an animal for every family. And we do know the love what they do bring into a family. And I could not agree more. In my house, we have several rescue dogs and we had a rescue cat who was fantastic. But unfortunately, when COVID came and we all had to move in together, we had a few people in the family that were allergic to cats. So, but that cat right now is in a loving home, but it was very sad for me to have to yeah. um, well, I had German Shepherds my whole life, and I was so proud. There was an artist who just donated a painting of my German Shepherd major. And I swear to God, every time we walk into the house again, I look at that oil painting, and I swear he's there. So uh, they're, they're just wonderful animals. Yes, and it's no question that dogs and cats give unconditional love, but that requires that the owner be a good owner. And what does it mean to be a good owner of a pet? Well, you have to feed that animal well. You have to give that pet love and kindness. Take the pet to the veterinarian when necessary. And then pretty much uh, make sure you give the pet attention. And in return, you will have a friend for life. And Right. My household, as I said, we have many rescue dogs and they know that they've been rescued and they give so much love to all of us. And having a, a rescue dog or cat is really life changing because it brings an enormous amount of love into a household. Now, uh, for our audience, um, we are with Ed Shulman. He is the CEO and co-founder of a 501c3, a charity called Operation Warrior Shield. And Operation Warrior Shield works with those that have served our country who are in need of a little help, a little support, maybe because of the stress of being um, abroad in, in, in a war zone or perhaps working in um, the military or in the police force where there's enormous amounts of stress. Ed, what else um, haven't I asked you that you might want to add? Well, I would love to see, uh, Jean, if there was, like I mentioned before, uh, if there is some large uh, corporation that still has some budget money, uh, that would love to be involved with us to uh, continue to spread the word of what we do. Uh, I would love to have them contact either directly you or me at E. Schloman at AOL, but we really need those kind of corporations that can. And when I was with Verizon years and years ago, uh, I always made sure that uh, wherever I was, we supported of uh, foundations such as what I have right now when I was with them. So uh, that's what we need. We need uh, those kind of organizations that can be very supportive. And I'm very happy to say thank God for Doris Day Animal Foundation, who is a big supporter of ours. And uh, the D David Lynch Foundation is good too. So uh, we need people to come forward and, and come out and support you know, together, uh, you know, I've, I, I'm with uh, Patricia and you 100% in or your, your mission of, of saving these wonderful animals and my mission uh, now with yours, we're saving some other wonderful animals and they're called some human beings too. So uh, we have to help stop the epidemic of veteran suicide still, no matter how much money they put out there, uh, to veterans, there's still 17 committing suicide a day. And that's not counting the six act of duty a day who commit suicide. You don't hear about it. It's not something that they want to publicize. But just like the epidemic of uh, 
these uh, drugs that are coming across that are getting into our children. It's an epidemic. And we need organizations like yours and mine and others to get together to uh, stop it. So I really appreciate this opportunity to have the chance to be with you and speak on behalf of Operation Warrior Shields Board. And I thank you very much for that, Gene. Yes, and uh, I think you're doing a very noble and a very important work through your charity, Operation Warrior Shield. Now, uh, for the audience, there are so many different ways to become a philanthropist and to help out. You can give your time, you can give your knowledge and your available resources. And I always say, well, if you don't have a lot of resources, meaning money to give at this particular time in your life, well, you can donate your time. And maybe later on, when you become a little more, when things get a little easier financially, you can sit down and write a check. Now, for the audience, again, you can think also about maybe putting a charity in your will, a percentage of your money that you're going to leave, you can give to a charity. If you find a cause that really, really interests you, or you have a passion for a charity or and what they do, well, you might want to leave them a little gift in your will. And I'm on eight charity boards. And most recently, we had a board meeting for one of them. And Sadly, a man died. He was well into his 90s, but he left us $100,000, that charity, and we were very grateful and very happy for that. And it's, it's just a way of leaving a little bit of a legacy, and every single charity appreciates anyone who does something like that. And Ed mentioned that he was interested in maybe more corporate donors. Well, corporations, foundations, and individuals are all available to help a charity like Operation Warrior Shield. And the work you do, Ed, is really great. And Ed, on another note, I always ask people, the people I interview, what advice do you give to a young person, maybe a man or a woman who might want to get involved in the military as you had done many years back. What advice can you give them? Well, we all know that you couldn't hire, if you are an employer, you could not hire a better person that comes to you already mature, trained on how to get things done, as to hire a veteran. Uh, I work with the Department of Veteran Services here in New York City with Commissioner Jim Hendon. We're very close to uh, doing what we're doing, this hiring, you know, hiring, making sure veterans are out there to be hired by corporations. Uh, I have another program, Job Path, where we help uh, veterans get jobs. But I, I tell you, it's a great uh, opportunity when you're 17, 18. But I really recommend all people, boy, uh, women and, and young men, that take a college education, join the ROTC, go into the military, hone your skills there, and you will not regret that move. And it's not saying that there's nothing wrong going in as a 17-year-old young man like I did. Uh, but uh, you'll never forget it. And to carry the title of veteran, very few people could do that these days. And uh, I'm very proud to say that, uh, um, you know, what, what did Kennedy say? Not ask what you could do for yourself or what you could do for your country. Exactly. And right now, I think we need good, good people uh, to be involved with some form of giving back. Ed, this has been really a wonderful interview and I truly am delighted to be able to discuss with you your charity, Operation Warrior Shield, and also to 
have the opportunity to speak with you and thank you very much for your service to our country because it really and truly means so much to all of us. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. Our guest today, Ed Shulman, and he is the CEO and founder of Operation Warrior Shield. I'm Jean Chafferoff, your host. I'll see you next week. Bye.